have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Verse 13 says, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for your presence, for your hand that's upon each and every one of our lives, for the opportunity that you've given us to be assembled together in this place. Oh, God, we know it was you that woke us this morning. You touched us again with your finger of love, and you aroused us, God. And you gave us the strength to uh, put on our clothes. And, God, you gave us a mind to be in your house, and we thank you for that. God, you protected us throughout this week, and you kept us from harm and hurt and danger. And you provide for the, pro provided for us clothes and food and shelter and uh, so all the things that we have, God, the ability to see, to smell, to taste, to touch, to walk, to talk, all of these things, God, you do it for us, and we acknowledge you today, and we honor you, and we thank you, Lord, for it all, and we bless your name, God, because there is none like you. You're greater than great, and you're gooder than good. And Father, we thank you for your hand that's upon us, and for your moving in our midst, God, in the name of Jesus and in our lives, and making us who it is you want us to be. And Father, we ask you to search our hearts today, and anything in us that is not like you, Lord. anything that would hinder you from moving in us and through us and for us, God, take it from us and help us, Lord, to lay it down at your feet, and God, that we might live holy before you. And God, we pray, oh God, for those who are facing difficulties in their bodies right now, God, we ask you, God, to touch them and to heal them. Father, in accord with your word, oh God, we take you at your word, God. Oh, God, I thank you for doing it now in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever the needs are of your people, I thank you for meeting them where they are. Even now, God, touch God. Oh, God, show yourself mighty in the midst of us today. So, Father, I thank you for Bishop and Pastor Helen for your hand and your anointing that's upon them. We strengthen them, God. We thank you for encouragement and peace, for open doors and ways made, and for your hands of protection to be around them. And, Father, everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that the windows of heaven be open over each and every one of them and everything that you've intended for their lives, God, that you would bring it to fruition. And I pray for their loved ones who are outside of the ark of safety, God, that you would touch their hearts and their minds. And, Lord, even as you drew us to your kingdom, draw them. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, break every yoke of bondage that will try to hold them captive. Loose them and let them go. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we call them in. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, in accord with your word, God, we thank you for it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you would touch now each and every one of these, your people. Touch their eyes that they see you and not me. Touch their ears that they hear you, not me. And Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you'd be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to read to you verse number eight of our text again. It says, then the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Today, I want to talk to you from the thought, no collateral needed. Your word is good with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I can't talk to you today. I got to talk to God. Now turn your heart toward heaven and say, Lord, no collateral needed. Your word is good with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your word is good with me. Collateral is security additional to one's personal obligation. Plainly stated, it's something beyond uh, your word. Uh, here's an example. If, if you've ever purchased a, a, a car uh, and you borrowed money to pay for it, it, it uh, you prob 
probably didn't get your the, the title for it immediately. Um, it was it was held to ensure that you would fulfill the paper the payments on the loan. It was security additional to your personal obligation. Now 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 depending on on your 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 credit record, not even collateral is enough to secure a loan. In those cases, uh, a co-signer is needed. Uh, a co-signer is someone who puts their name on the line with yours, just in case you don't follow through on what you what you said you were going to do. Uh, uh, co-signers are typically needed for 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 young people who have not established credit, and, and they are needed for not so young people. <laughs> who don't follow through on what they say they're going to do. <laughs> All right, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, uh, sometimes they, they need something extra uh, to, to ensure uh, that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. Mm. Let's see, what you need to understand is when you put your name on the line, you're ultimately giving them your word that you're going to fulfill your obligation. Now, now, now some people don't need collateral or a co-signer. Uh, they, they have established a, a, a reputation um, that says that, that they are going to do what it is they said they're going to do. They get what we call an unsecured or a signature loan. <laughs> yeah, 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 they, 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 have an, uh, they have a reputation that, that says, I, I, I say what I mean and I mean what I say. Uh, I'm, I'm following through on what it is I'm going to do. And, 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 and so uh, we got to understand that, that we serve a kind of God that, that has a reputation today. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he has a reputation that he does what he says when he says he's going to do it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He might not come when we want him to come. But I, want, I'm, I found out that if he said he's going to do it, he's built a, a reputation. He's established with me. And given me confidence that if he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. No wonder the Bible tells us in Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said and shall he not uh, do it? Hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? I came to encourage you. To remind you. That everything that God has said he's going to do, he's going to make it good. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you may have been waiting for a while. And it may seem like things are getting worse rather than better. But I want you to know that God's word is good. And if he said it, he's going to do it. You just have to take him at his word. As we look at this text, we find that Jesus has come to Capernaum. And the Bible says, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lying at home sick of the palsy, grievously torment. Verse 7 says, Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. <laughs> then the centurion does something that amazes Jesus. <laughs> We're often amazed by Jesus. Isn't it wonderful to, to be able to have the kind of faith that would amaze Jesus? The Bible says he marveled, it's King James. That word means amazed. Jesus says, whoa, what? what? 
Can you imagine? This is Jesus. To make, to, to almost make Jesus say, You know, because cause he, he, he used to dealing with folk who have no faith. <laughs> and what, what ain't those folks you was talking about last week? Pastor Johnny, who was on the boat, and he looked at him and said, why did you have no faith? And he was talking to folk who had been walking with him. And here come this centurion. A Roman soldier who may not have had any kind of relationship at all. And he says, your Lord, just speak the word only. <laughs> In other words, I don't need any collateral. Because, see, the collateral would have been him coming. <laughs> all you got to do is speak the word. Help me, Jesus. Jerry answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldst come in under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. In other words, I don't need any collateral. I don't need security additional to your personal obligation. Your word is good with me. I, I don't Maybe somehow he read David, uh, what David wrote in Psalms 138 and 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple. Praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. See, that's significant because the Bible says in Philippians 2 and 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And Acts 4.12 says, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby men must be saved. Ah, now, come on now. The reason his name is great is because his word is great. I, I, tell, I work with the young people a lot, and I tell them often that your, your name is only as good as your word. If your word is no good, The reason why folk have to have a cosign, because at least to the folk who they're trying to get this money from, their name is no good. Y'all ain't going to help me. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word. That goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the day where unto I send it. The centurion was, was different from many other folk in Jesus' day and many other folk in ours, in that all he needed was the word. He didn't need any security. Beyond that, he said, Lord, your, your word is good with me. It's good enough. Now, 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 I, I, I know, I know. Sometimes the circumstances of our lives will begin to mess with our, our belief in his word. And so there's no doubt somebody sitting here and maybe somebody's watching who are saying, hey, Pastor Ron, all, all that sounds good, but I've been dealing with this issue in my body for a long time. <laughs> and if that's you, I, I want you to know that the Lord told me to tell you that he already signed the note on your healing. <laughs> he already signed the note 
on your healing because Isaiah 53 and 5 says he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed I'm not trying to belittle what it is is going on in your body. But God is not a man that he should lie. His promises in him are yea and amen. And if he said it, it's got to come to pass. And I've come to tell somebody who has been racked with pain and who's going through, the Bible says that with his stripes, we're healed. And you just got to take a stand and step out and say, God, I don't need any collateral. Your word is good with me. Because ah! he already signed the note. His name is on the line. Ah! And he placed his word above his name. Somewhere I read that heaven and earth would pass away before one jot or one tittle of his word fail. Help me, Jesus. I know, I know. Sometimes when you've had to go through for a long time and you've suffered long, it can seem like somehow God is not going to come through. But let me reassure you that his word cannot fail. <laughs> it cannot fail. So we say no collateral needed. Your word is good with me. Ah, maybe, maybe. Maybe you're waiting. You've been waiting a long time for your family to be saved. And you say, my spouse is getting old, and my children aren't children anymore. Oh, well, let me tell you that the note on your family has already been signed. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7 and 14, the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. So you keep on holding up the right. You keep on living holy in front of them. Yeah, they might seem like they're getting worse, but what you're doing and the life that you're living is working. It's changing things. It's turning things. And he may be trying to be routine. He may be trying to run. And she may be trying to run, but she can't or he can't get away because the note has already been signed. And as for your children, you don't have to worry about them either because the note has been signed for them. For Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And then if that weren't enough, Psalms 37 and 4 says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of the heart. I just came to tell somebody that the note has already been signed. Yeah, they may be wayward. Yeah, they may be living contrary to what you taught them, but the note, <laughs> the note is signed. And they can run, but they can't hide. Ah, hallelujah. No collateral needed. Your word is good with me. Ah. Some out there talking about they living like they're living in. Saying, well, I, I prayed it, and it ain't changed. Uh, uh, see, here's what they fail to see. It's 
what they failed to see. The fact that they, they prayed says that God already touched their heart. And he's waiting on them to bring their flesh under subjection. See, see, because God works on our heart. We got to deal with our own flesh. But that's all right. Because, see, when God really get full control of your heart, he'll make you work on your flesh. He'll make you do what you're supposed to do. And he has already put it on the docket. He already signed the note. And he's going to deal with that heart until the flesh has to line up with his word. No collateral needed. Your word good with me. I know, I know, I know. Somebody sitting there saying, yeah, yeah, all oh, that's good, Pastor Ron. But my finances are jacked up. Oh, what do you say about that? Well, let me tell you that the note already been signed on your finances. John 3, 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And Deuteronomy 28, 12 and 13 says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in, this, in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee at the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to do that. Observe. And do them. See, I know, I know there are folk out there who, who would try to relegate that scripture to, to just the children of Israel. Well, now let me sir, let you serve notice on you that I am the spiritual seed of Abraham. And their promise is my promise. And everything that he said to them belongs to me. Ah, that's why the soul said it belongs to me. Ah, it belongs to me. You can't talk me out of it. He already signed the note. He already signed the note. And it's mine. I'm about to close. But I can't help but believe that there's still somebody who's saying that's Oh, that's good, Pastor Ron. You hit a lot of stuff, but you ain't hit my issue. <laughs> that's okay. Let me tell you that God has already signed the note on your issue as well. For the Bible says in Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of your needs. All of your need, according to his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what your problem is. Yeah. All you need to know is God's word has already covered it. The note has already been signed. He already said, I got this. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It doesn't matter how long you've dealt with it. I want you to know that the note has already been signed. And all you have to do is come to the place to where you believe. And you take him at his word. And you say, no collateral need. Your word is good. You don't have to come with me to my house. Mm -hmm. You don't have to send a whole lot of folk. You, 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 you don't have to give me no other signs. 
you said it. And because you said it, I believe it. I take you at your word. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I don't care what it looks like. What it looks like doesn't supersede what you said. That's, that's the place where we, we sometimes get to. We, start to. we start to focus on what it looks like rather than what he said. But ladies and gentlemen, there comes a point where we have to say, Lord, no collateral needed. <laughs> you, get a, you, you can get a signature loan from me. <laughs> uh-huh. I already know that you signed the, you, you, you signed the note. He signed the note. <laughs> On every need that you possibly have. Every desire that you want, anything that you want. He already signed a note. What are we going to do? Are we going to be like the disciples who were on the boat in the midst of the storm? And who cry out, care not that we perish? And have Jesus feeling like we have no faith? Or are we going to marvel him? And even in our long suffering. Even in our waiting, keep on and keep, keep, keep the faith and say, no collateral needed. Your word is good with me. <coughs> I wish. I wish that, well, I say I wish. But not really because at the end of the day, God's timing is far better than anything that we could want. But it would make most of us happier, at least for a season, if we got what we wanted as soon as we asked. Right? But the reality is, the Bible says to everything there is a time and a season. <laughs> and he knows exactly when to deliver what it is you need. And stuff that is delivered out of season, most of the time ain't very good. <laughs> you know, it's garden season. You, you mess around and go to the garden and pick something too soon. Pastor Katie cut a watermelon yesterday that was picked too soon. It wasn't right. It wasn't ready. So it was good for nothing. It looked apart. And, and when, it, when it was brought in the house, I was happy. You get what I'm saying? But when it came down to it, it was good for nothing. But when it's delivered in its season. And thanks be to God. That we serve an omniscient father who knows when and how to deliver. 
He don't always come when we want him. But I found him to be always on time. I've called him late in the midnight hour. And sometimes he showed up immediately. But sometimes he tarried. But I found out that when he comes, it's always right. And it's always good. I thank God that we can trust him. He's that kind of God. My God Almighty. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Trust him. He's going to come through. And with that, I say, God, no collateral. Your word is good with me. It's good. Even if I have to wait a while longer, the songwriter said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. <laughs> if you if you if, if that's you, will you stand with me? I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Come on, help me, tell him. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. No collateral needed. Lord, your word is good with me. I'm sure, I'm sure. God didn't just give me this word. Just to give it to me. There's some folk who got some issues. You got some stuff. No doubt it's been hard. And the struggle has been real. To the point where at times maybe you wanted to throw in the towel. Ain't you glad that you serve a God that when you want to throw it, he'll throw it back to you. <laughs> I remember 
when I was in college. One day, my coach had us running. And we ran. And we ran. And we ran. And we ran some more. And he, I mean, we down and back. Down and back. At first he was he was on go. 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 And we did it so long till he squatted down on the knee and got his whistle. <laughs> you know if you don't ran long enough for him to get tired of standing. You don't ran a while. <laughs> we ran so much to finally, I, I, I just went over to him. And I said, enough. <laughs> he got mad. He said, don't tell me what your body can do. I know what you can do. Guess what? I ran some more. But guess what? Listen to this. When we want to throw in the towel, God says, don't tell me what you can do. I made you. I know what you can handle. I know what I put in you. I know the stuff that I made you from. And I know it's good because it's like me. <laughs> I'm not trying to destroy you. I'm trying to build you. And this is what I found out. I tell Coach England's girls this all the time. Because when they have to run that mile, and it's time, I tell them, that you can't be afraid to hurt. Because what happens is when you're running, the tendency is when it starts to hurt, is to slow down. Because mm -hmm. you want to ease the pain. You don't want to push any further. But God says it's when you're when you're hurting, that's when you got to push. <laughs> you can't be afraid of the pain. Because I'm going to tell you, that's some pain in this walk. got to be come to a place where we say your word is good with me. Today if you're here and you're going through and you're going through and you just need prayer to keep holding on. You just need prayer. God I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for any other signs. I'm going to take you at your word, but I, I need some strength to keep holding. If that's you, will you come? If you just need some strength. I ain't saying to hang on. I'm saying to hold on. Mm -hmm. There have been some days when all I could do was hold. I couldn't climb. I couldn't reach for him. I'm just holding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He knew who was going to be here. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. He knows.
knows. And he got you. He got you. He knows. He got you. He got you. He got you. He's going to come. He got you. He already signed the note on it. He's already signed the note on it. He got you. Elder Francis. He already signed the note. It's already signed. He got you. So come. Oh God, you signed the note. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. God, thank you for doing what you promised. In the name of Jesus. He signed the note. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Grab your neighbor's hand. Grab your neighbor's hand. Because I want you to understand that you're not in this alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to, I want you to know that you're, that you're not alone. And the person standing next to 